I am having so much fun as a convert studying and going through my Book of Mormon and preparing these lessons for each and every one of you. I pray you're having a great Sabbath or whatever day you're tuning in. I would like to start before we start with, I speak unto you as ye were present, Moroni chapter seven, verse nine. I would like to start with a little disclaimer. I would like to share a little disclaimer. I'm a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and this is my way of learning and growing. So please forgive me as this is live. And if I mispronounce anything, or if I'm not 100% doctrinal correct, I am dyslexic, but I am also doing my best. I pray that you feel the spirit as we study together. At the end, I'm going to list three major takeaways I've learned from this lesson, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I speak unto you as if I was present. What if, what if we could read a message written specifically for you by someone who lived over 1,500 years ago? Holy stars! That's exactly what happened to Mormon in chapter 7, verse 9. Mormon and Moroni, two prophets from ancient times, speak with a clarity and urgency that feels like you're talking directly to us today. Their final words aren't just historical records. They are personal, heartfelt pleas to us in the latter days. What can we learn from two men who witnessed the total destruction of their people, yet still held fast and firm in their faith in our Savior Jesus Christ? Here are five powerful insights from Moroni chapter 7, verse 9. Can change the way we see our days and ourselves. One, Mormon's final plead, plea, believe in Christ. In Mormon 7 of the Book of Mormon, <clears throat> Mormon pleads to his people and ultimately to us today. He urges us to believe in Jesus Christ, repent and be baptized. But what makes this plea so powerful is that it comes from a prophet who has witnessed the destruction of his entire nation. Imagine being the last voice calling out to the world that has turned its back on God, yet Mormon doesn't speak with despair. He speaks with hope, knowing that Christ's gospel is the answer for the future. Why is why it matters? Mormon's testimony reminds us that no matter how dark the world seems, there's always hope in Christ. He his invitation is timeless, encouraging us to take Christ's hand and never let go. Never let go. And you know, I'm holding on to his hand right now because I'm freezing. It's only 52 degrees, but I thought it was going to be a little warmer. And I was speaking at two Sunday schools today in church. So about the Light the World campaign for my calling, which is so exciting. Two, so the second thing, Moroni's warning for our day. I speak unto you as if you were present. When Moroni picks up the records Mormon in Mormon 8 he is all alone he his father Mormon is dead his people are gone yet he writes with an astounding oh my gosh answers to our time he saw our day and the challenges that we face now. He even addresses us directly by saying, quote, I speak unto you as if ye were present. 
That's in Mormon, chapter 8, verse 35. And as I reflect on this, I'm looking at all my notes from 2017 and 18 when I was studying with the missionaries. And I just love going back to this. Now, when I look at that verse 35 in chapter 8, uh, let me find, pull it up here. That's chapter 9. Okay, 35 is right here. My notes are taken from Sister Esplin and Sister Tomlinson, who taught me the, the lessons when I, and this is the original book that I had those lessons with. So he's speaking to us. Moroni foresaw the pride, the wickedness, the disbelief of the latter days. And he gives us a stark warning. Don't let destruction of the world lead the way of truth. How do we see that coming right now? We're in the middle of a political election. On Tuesday, I go and vote. And you know what? There's a lot of contention out there. I don't care who you vote for. I'm voting for Jesus. And that's what counts. But don't ever judge people for... Because who you think I vote for is not who you would think I would vote for. Let me just leave it at that. He saw this. The warning, don't let the destruction of the world lead away from the truth. Why it matters? Moroni's prophet, prophetic voice, cut through the noise of, modern, of the modern world. His warning is more relevant today than ever. He asked us, will we stand firm in our faith or will we be swept away by the world's distractions? Think about that. When, you're, when, when you hear a friend that votes differently than you, are you going to be swept away by that? Or are you going to be swept away by Jesus? Number three, the Book of Mormon, a miracle for our time. In Mormon chapter 9, Moroni reminds us of the mir miracles or the miraculous nature of the Book of Mormon. He urges us to believe that miracles still happen today and that the power of God hasn't ceased. Moroni knew that the latter days, many would doubt miracles or even mock the idea of divine intervention. But the testimony is firm. The miracles have stopped. It's because people have stopped believing. Now, when I think about my calling as uh, in communications and for the Light the World Giving Machines for Connecticut, we only have 66 followers on the Instagram page for the Mystic Connecticut Giving Machines. The amount of hatred comments we're getting are outweighing the positive. I'm witnessing this right now. What I prepared for this week come forth with people coming after us. Why it matters? Moroni's message challenges us to rekindle our faith in God's power. Miracles happen when we believe. And Moroni's word, words remind us that the Book of Mormon itself is a miracle meant to guide us through the latter days and our trials. I need to angle this a little different. The sun is really messing with me right now. Maybe that's better. I apologize. Plus, I'm freezing, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, these are the trials. So, number four. God is unchanging. So are his promises. One of the most comforting truths Moroni shares in Mormon chapter 9 is that God does not change. He, his love Commandments and promises are the same yesterday, 
today and forever. Oh my gosh, Moroni bears witness that no matter how the world shifts around us, we can always rely on the Lord. His promise are sure and true. I can testify to this. And the sun really isn't working in my favor. It's okay. It's not about looking at me. You should be looking at scripture. Or I should be facing this to a stream or the fall foliage, which we lost. Which is interesting. When I did this here last week, it was gorgeous. Now the leaves are all gone. Um, it's amazing how fast it changes. Now, why is this, why it matters in a world full of uncertainty, Moroni's reminder gives us the confidence to trust in God's plan. His unchanging nature means we can find stability and peace no matter what challenges we face. No matter what challenges we face, we can find it in him. Number five, Moroni's invitation, pray to know for yourself. Moroni's final invitation, you know, before I go there, I'm sending this to a friend of mine. Angela, I'm dedicating this to you. She was my first convert baptism that I did in March 2018. And you just came to me right now, or the spirit just came, and I just feel like when I'm done with this and it's uploaded, I'm sending it to you to watch because I'm thinking about you, sister. I love you. So now I lost where I was. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going to go with the spirit. Mormon's final invitation in nine is powerful. Ask God if the things are true. This isn't just a passive suggestion. It's a discreet or a direct, excuse me, that's the dyslexic in me, discreet and direct. It's a direct challenge to each of us to seek our own testimony. Moroni knew, oh, I got goosebumps and it's not the cold, knew that the latter days would be surrounded by doubt and confusion. But his invitation is simple. If you want to know the truth, ask God. He will answer. Why it matters? Moroni's challenge to pray and ask for a witness of the Book of Mormon's truthfulness is a life-changing invitation that I took upon myself, that my friend Angela took upon herself after studying the gospel the church for four years before she got baptized. Four years. She was studying it back when I was an anti-member. And that's a whole other story. Um, so this is for us to know. Moroni knew that each of us would need our own personal confirmation of the truth, especially in a world that is constantly questioning faith. Now, it's your turn. Mormon and Moroni give everyone they had to leave this message for us. Their words echo across centuries, filled with the hope and urgency of prophets who saw our day. Will we heed their counsel? Will we seek our own witness? Okay, here comes, here's my come follow me takeaways for this week to focus on your studies when you ponder and pray or if you rewatch this or study it with a friend. This is what I got out of it. My, I sent this to my friend Lorraine in England this morning. She's the Relief Society president over in England um, somewhere. And I consider her my best friend and I sent her this and I want to share it with you. My favorite 
is the third one. So pay attention. Number one is Mormon's final plead, plea. Believe in Christ. Mormon's final message to us is filled with hope despite the distractions around him. He urges us to believe in Jesus Christ, repent and be baptized, reminding us that hope in Christ can prevail even in the darkest time. Number two, Mormon's prophetic warning. Quote, I speak unto you as if ye were present, close quote. Mormon's words are as relevant today as they were in his time. He foresaw the pride and the wickedness of the day and warned us to stay firm in our faith, not allowing destruction of the world to lead us away from the truth. And the third and my favorite, and I was so moved by this, I actually shared this on Pinterest this morning. And I don't really post much on Pinterest and I only have like, I think a hundred people on Pinterest, it's not a lot. But I just felt the spirit to do it and I did it. So I had to put on my first Nephi 37 socks, Go and Do by our friends at Book of Mormon. And I posted it on Pinterest. So this is my favorite takeaway. God is unchanging. So are his promises. Moroni reminds us that God loves commandments and promise never changes. In the world of uncertainty, his true truth offers us stability and confidence knowing that we can always rely on the Lord. As I close, I want to leave you with my testimony. As I bore witness today in two Sunday schools about the power of the giving machines, I want to bear testimony about how this book has changed my life. As it says in verse, in chapter 9, verse 12, Behold, he created Adam, and by Adam came the fall of man. And because of the fall of man came Jesus Christ, even the Father and the Son. And that's what I have highlighted here. Dropping pass along cards. And this was dated um, November 8, 2017. And then I have it also dated Alexis, Sister Alexis, when she ret uh, returned home from her mission, August 19, 2018. And I have my priesthood cheek sheet here that I used when I was a convert because I didn't know all the ordinance. So I would, I know I'm getting off topic here but this is what I would use to read that you know what we can do like dedicating a grave dedicating a home uh, a father's blessing a comfort you know all that stuff pre all the priesthood ordinance so and my pass along cards are falling out but I want to leave you with my testimony that this book I have seen change lives I have witnessed even it's softening my parents' heart. I was reading them some verses and I actually apologized and said, I'm sorry these are taken from the Book of Mormon, but my father was getting it. And I was like, why am I apologizing? Because they're Christian. But I know that when you rely on those promptings and when we think about what Mormon and Moroni went through, I am at awe, and you too could be at awe, and I am perfectly comfortable. I say bring it on, anti-members, bring it on, because I got the armor of God, I got the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit will always be with us as long as we read, ponder, apply action wash, rinse, and repeat. And I say this as my testimony 
in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have an awesome day. And at six o'clock tonight, I pray that you enjoy my uh, third part of my series, Debunking Myths, on YouTube. Bye for now.